Yes, God does care about suffering. He identifies with us in our pain, in our, our wonder, in our questioning, and he does so in a very real presence of himself. I think that he does. He sends messengers to do his work for him. Um, it's not that you know we don't see him, we don't hear of him, and he doesn't care. It's not that at all. Um, we've got people doing his work all over the planet, some notable and some you know not so notable, but they're still doing all the same work. I don't know at the moment, but I don't think he does sometimes, honestly, because my, I'm not wrong as my husband, and he suffered enough. And I often wonder whether there was one anybody up there. I think God cares about suffering more than we could possibly imagine. His son Jesus is described in scriptures as one who's acquainted with grief and suffering. He knows suffering even more intimately probably than we do. And when we suffer, he walks with us, he is with us in the middle of it, and I often think when I'm crying, he's probably crying alongside with me. I believe the army serves suffering humanity simply because we, we know it is the right thing to do. We know that when we look at the example of Jesus Christ, that is exactly what Jesus did. He identified with the suffering and the oppressed, and he chose to place himself in the midst of it to bring hope. And I believe he calls Christians to do that. Why does this, the army serve suffering humanity? Well, I, I think we follow Jesus' example. At the heart of the Christian faith is the startling fact that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, came to earth to suffer. It was his deliberate purpose, among others, and his sacrificial, painful death on a cross demonstrates the grace of God to a degree beyond our understanding. Jesus not only suffered, he chose to suffer. Isaiah wrote centuries earlier, he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Christians relate this prophecy to Jesus, and in doing so, realize something else. Jesus not only chose to suffer, but he chose to suffer for us, for our salvation. There was purpose, eternal purpose, to his suffering. It's human nature to avoid suffering, just as it seems to be human nature often to blame God for any suffering that comes our way. It isn't unusual to find people blaming God for the sins and wrongs of the world. If we find ourselves doing so, it's helpful to remember that Jesus actually took all the sins of the world on his shoulders, and in doing so, took any blame we might care to throw at him. It was an incredible situation, the created crucifying the Creator, but it happened. God was in Christ totally identifying himself with a suffering world. He still identifies with us. By his spirit, he is still among us, sharing our burdens, living our life with us, strengthening and supporting us with his grace. In 1953, Fritz Eichenberg created a wood carving, Christ of the Breadlines. It depicts a group of homeless men in a queue waiting for food. Significantly, Eichenberg didn't place Christ at the head of the queue or giving out bread to the needy. He placed him in the centre of the queue, poor, vulnerable, dependent, totally identifying with those in need. He is still the same Christ today, always with us. It's also a mistake to think that the people we serve are suffering humanity and we are somehow exempt we each are part of suffering humanity. All of us encounter suffering. None of us is immune from being hurt. The Salvation Army has its programs to help people who suffer in particular ways through addictions or homelessness, hunger or lack of love, for example. But we should never forget that the whole of creation suffers, including you and me. Life is not a competition to see who may become the best person, or who can achieve the most, we are on earth to help one another without looking for reward or praise. And as we each make it our purpose to serve suffering humanity, God brings his healing grace to our lives too.